The title of my talk is From Experience uh, to Expertise. Today, our society is made of many different professions, many different expertise. Somebody is a scientist, somebody a banker, somebody a doctor. But the challenging thing is all of us uh, have to decide about what we're going to do down the road at the age that we don't really know if that's something we're going to like, or even after we do go through the training, if the board is going to need that. Let me ask you this. How many of you who have gone through college today are doing something that is directly related to your education? Raise your hand. That's not bad. Actually, the national average is 27%. That means only 27% of Americans today are doing something that's directly related to their college degree. So with that, let me tell you my story. I was born in Iran in 1977, and for the first time experienced living in Tehran. And uh, as I was growing up, uh, I was fascinated with computers. I heard the story of a bunch of guys you know, with bearded face somewhere else, uh, in Silicon Valley, putting together silicon and wire and making cool stuff. And uh, I know it sounds nerdy, but I thought, this is really cool. This is what I want to do. I want to be an electrical engineer when I grow up. So with that mission, I went to University of Tehran to get my undergraduate degree in electrical engineering. And uh, I decided to go to Canada for my master's degree. Of course, not an easy thing to do for somebody who is from Iran, you know, with Iranian passport and all those mandatory military service. But uh, finally, I made it. In '99, I landed in Vancouver. This is actually Canada, not China. So <laughs> I, I went to Simon Fraser University and uh, graduated in 2001. And I thought, okay, this is the time that. I can finally experience what I learned over the years, and uh, let's find a job. But remember I told you, you don't have control over the world around you. Sometimes you just have to adopt, do what the world wants you to do. So my first job interview was exactly on 9-11. I went for the interview, and as you can imagine, nothing happened. A few hours there and talked to people, and uh, they told me we'll, we will let you know, and of course they never did. So, what I earned from 9-11, actually, was my PhD. I did what everybody else does during the recession. I went back to school for my PhD, but this time I said I really have to experience this, maybe just to try to see if I can find a job. What if I graduate and you know, after all these years of studies, you know, I can't. So in 2005, during my PhD, I went down to Bay Area to work for a startup. This is me and Einstein in my cube. What I learned was that over the course of 20 years, a lot of things had changed. So the engineering, electrical engineering, wasn't like sitting in the lab and working with equipment. It was all about um, sitting at your desk, running simulation, and uh, 10 hours uh, working with computers, which is OK. But I thought to myself, is this really what I was hoping for? Is this going to be my life from now on? So not very happy with my experience <laughs> going back to finish my PhD, and I was thinking, uh, what, what should I do now? Uh, 22 years of education to be an electrical engineer, and now uh, I'm not sure if this, this was the right decision for me. So I thought probably I need to try different things, you know, just try different things, try to discover myself. So this is me on the movable feast in LA. I moved down to LA in 2007 to work for a company as a, a rotation engineer. This was a unique program that uh, gave me the opportunity to move around in the company in different divisions, uh, from, say, design to marketing and legal. And uh, this was the first place that basically I made the transition from engineering to uh, intellectual property. I was moved to legal department to work with some patents. And, uh, as I started working with the patent system, uh, I realized that the whole system is kind of crazy. How many of you have heard something about patent recently? Yeah, you can ask your lawyer friends. The thing is, uh, say you have an idea. First of all, it takes on average two to three years to uh, get a patent with your idea. Why is that? 
uh, is because the patent system is overloaded. There is uh, two to 300 or more thousand applications pending in the patent office. And the scary part is, even after you get the patent, you, you might have built the entire business around your idea, and somebody may go and challenge your idea because he's had another patent which had like some overlap with yours, and basically not only you lose your entire business, you lose also your patent. And why is that happening? The reason is the way the patent system works. There is a single person sitting in the patent office uh, who is assigned to your application, and basically his job is to review and make sure your idea is new and novel. And over the course of a year, he not only looks at your idea, he looks at many other ideas. And of course, nobody is an expert in everything, so there is a chance that he misses something. So as I was learning about this, and also looking back at my experience, uh, my computer background, and thinking, okay, how can I improve this even marginally? Uh, I thought maybe we can ask more people. You know, the thing about human nature is uh, sometimes if you ask a somewhat vague question from a group of people, you'll be surprised. You get actual answers. So I thought that might be the way to do it. Uh, in 2010, I started Patexia. This is me in our Santa Monica office. We have a tech team in Ukraine. And uh, our mission is to bring transparency and efficiency to the intellectual property world. How do we do that? Exactly the way I explain it. Instead of a single person, we have built a site. It's a crowdsourcing platform. We have several thousand subject experts uh, from around the world. And we form a contest from the patent or from the idea and ask our community of subject experts to basically assess the novelty. So we've been surprised. We've got uh, results from all over the world, from Asia to Europe to US, sometimes an attorney, sometimes a, even a consumer or scientist. They find things that patent office never discovered. And uh, this is how I think the world is changing. I think uh, we are gradually dealing with bigger and bigger problems, and it's not uh, possible for a single person to come up with a solution. We need different expertise, and each person can come up and offer a small solution that overall, when we collect all those uh, solutions together, we come up with a big solution for the big problem. And uh, I believe we are moving towards a knowledge-based society. Our, uh, where the economy is going to be mostly driven by innovation. And uh, corporations basically need different types of specific, uh, specific expertise, and, uh, which is constantly changing. So it's not easy for somebody who is 16 or 17 to know exactly what he or she is going to do down the road. If you had asked me like 10 years ago, I had no clue that I would end up in intellectual property. So the thing is, Today, I'm not an electrical engineer, but you know, the whole life journey, all the mistakes I've done, the places I've lived, uh, basically has made me an expert in what I do today. And that's true for all of us. I think uh, school and education is not perfect. It's not optimized for, the, for today's world. But it's, we should look at it as tools you know, that uh, helps us find our way. We need to try different things and try it's during that uh, trial period that we discover ourselves, and uh, basically, with that, we can find our true expertise. Thank you.